In this presentation, we will record deposits within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. The open windows can be viewed by going to the view tab, open windows list. What we're going to do now is record deposits. Now these are going to be deposits that have already been uh, entered in the system in a way they've been entered and are recorded as undeposited funds. Why would we do that? Recall that that could happen in two ways. This is usually how QuickBooks prefers to process the deposits for sales. So if we were to make a deposit, in other words, uh, directly into the bank, say it was from us, we're putting money into our business or taking a loan out or something, we could use this deposit directly but the deposit screen here is indicating that there are five items that we should be holding on to, <laughs> we should have in our possession, that are ready to deposit. And those five items are currently in, typically, undeposited funds. That's what that means. How does that happen? Well, either when we make a sale, we either make an invoice or we have a create sales receipt. If we make an invoice, we're going to bill the client. We're going to send the invoice, the bill, to the client. They're going to then pay us. Then we're going to record the sales receipt. This will reduce the amount that is owed to us by the client, reducing accounts receivable. And it'll record the other side not into cash as we typically would think of it or not into the checking account as we would think, but into undeposited funds unless we change that field to deposit to the checking account in this step. Uh, it's preferred to go to undeposited funds because we could have multiple payments that we receive and not have gone to the bank yet. So we're gonna to go to the bank later and we wanna make sure that we group everything correctly when we go to the bank. In other words, we wanna make sure that what's in our system in terms of something going into the bank is in the same format as it will be shown on the bank statement. And the way to do that is to use this undeposited funds. So we have some received payments, checks we got in the mail from invoices we sent out that have not yet been deposited. We are, we're holding on to the cash or holding on to the check. And then the sales receipt, same thing. If we sell sale uh, items in a store uh, or something like that, and we get cash at the same point in time that we make sales, then we're gonna debit cash, but not cash, increasing cash, but not cash in QuickBooks, but undeposited funds. Because our goal there is to sell many things. If we're selling guitars, we're hoping to sell many guitars. If we're doing service items, we're hoping to do many service items in our shop, collect all the stuff in our cash register, wherever we're storing the cash, and then go to the bank at the end of the day. So all of this stuff is going to be stored up in this undeposited funds account, which we're now, we can imagine us taking the journey to the bank, <laughs> where we're actually going to make the physical deposit. And we want to make sure that we then group our uh, collections in the same format that we deposit. If we deposit daily, as we should if we're going to get, you know, if we're collecting different uh, revenue sources every day, then uh, we'll just we'll just group everything on a daily transaction. All the sales for the day will then group together and deposit with one deposit. And there will make it easy for us to match up what's on the bank statement recorded by the bank to what we record in our system here on the deposit. So before we do that, let's take a look at what's on the financial statements first. We're going to go to the uh, reports up top. We're going to go to the companies and financial. Scroll on down to the balance sheet standard. Balance sheet standard. And I'm going to change the date. I'm going to go up top to the customized date. And we're going to go to the date range of 01011921913119. Uh, and then say OK. So January through December 2019. And what we have here is this undeposited funds. That's what we're looking at. That's what that five items means when it says it hasn't been deposited. If you double click on that, you're going to see payments. We're going to see um, sales receipts. So, so these are the two items. This is a sales receipt that we made kind of in the store. We made a sale for cash. Payments are payments we would received for invoices we shipped or we sent out in the past. So, so now we're going to take, we should, you know, basically we could imagine we have a separate check or separate payments, cash or whatever we got for these amounts. And we got to go to the store, to the, to the bank. Now in our example problem, we're going to break these up a little bit because we wanted to 
group together the sales items and go through the system in a systematic way. In other words, going back to the home page, we kind of grouped the invoices together, then took a, took a look at the sales receipts, then looked at uh, the create sales payments, and now we're looking at recording. Obviously in practice, we would wanna every day, we would have to go to the bank and make the deposits as we go. So just note that in our problem, we kind of looked at these in a systematic way. In practice, of course, we would be making deposits each day as, as, as we go through this process. So we're going to group the deposits in, a, in um, grouping them a couple different groupings as we go to the bank. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go back to the, to the balance sheet. We're going to go to the bank and we're going to deposit these and that's going to take them out of undeposited funds, put them where we really want them to be, the checking account. Okay, so let's go back to the home and we're just going to select the record deposits. Now, when it has this five up there, that means there's something that's connected to it, a sales receipt and uh, cash and, and create sales. These two things are making that, that five, that's the connection. There's a connection <laughs> there. And so when we select deposit, it's not gonna go, I just clicked on deposit. So it's not gonna go straight to the deposit screen, which is this usually. It's gonna go to this pop-up screen, this little pop-up and says, hey, you got these things that we, we the system think you're holding on to. You should be holding on to these payments because you recorded in the system that you got these payments and have not yet gone to the bank. Is that true? Are you going to the bank now? <laughs> if so, you should be depositing some of these items that you recorded in the system and have not yet gone to the bank with. This is basically saying that these items are in undeposited funds and need to be deposited. So we're going to say, yeah, we're the first time we're going to deposit this, this uh, 420 and this 208. So these two items that happened on the 16th. That's going to add up to 628. So on the bank, uh, when we deposit these, we're going to group them together and deposit them together. And the bank will show 628 deposit, a $628 deposit. And that's the key. We want to make those things match out. We want to show in our books a 628 deposit so that when we match it out to the bank, when we reconcile, we will see the same number rather than having to add the deposits together which can be very tedious if we have a lot of deposits making up you know, one amount. That could be difficult to reconcile. So we're going to say, okay, that's what we want. And there's the deposit. So now we're going to say it's from the checking account. That should be the default for the deposit screen. If we have more than one checking account or one, we want to make sure we're on the right one. We're going to say it happened on the 17th in our problem. So I'm going to, instead of hitting the whole date, I'm just going to select the plus arrow, changing the date to January 17th. And these are the two items. If we think about the transaction that will be happening here, we're going to say that the checking account will go up. That's what a deposit uh, form does. It's going to increase the checking account. And the other side is determined by these two items. And it's going to be coming out of this account, undeposited funds. So we're, we're, this is the other side. It's defaulting here, of course, because it's being connected to uh, the items that created it, the sales receipts and the receive payments. So let's go ahead and say save and close and see if it does what we would expect. I'm going to close out this. I'm going to go back to the balance sheet, which is open over here in our open windows. And we're going to say, okay, the checking account should go up now. We would suspect, we would hope. So we're going to go to the checking account and we're going to say that there's the deposit. So the deposit is there. Double clicking on that, we'll see that there is our deposit. So closing this back out. It put the other side to split because there's two kind of accounts that were affected, even though they're both going to undeposited funds. So if we close this back out, we should go to undeposited funds now, which is uh, here. There's the undeposited. If we double click on that item, we're going to say that undeposited funds are going to be these two here. And note what it did. It listed them out separately. So if I, if I click on either one of these, it'll go to the same deposit. So I'm going to close this back out. So here, uh, that helps us to be able to tie this out. So we can tie these items out in this format. If it grouped them together, then it would be difficult for us to kind of tie them out. So you got to kind of note that these two uh, deposits are going to be on the same deposit form going into the bank at the same time. So we're going to then close this back out and try this process again. So we will go back home. We see that there's still three items that are saying, hey, you still have three items here that uh, you should be holding on to and depositing. So we're going to select that. 
once again the pop-up window pops up because these are our three items that are in the system telling us that we should be holding on to them and making the payment with them so we're going to go ahead and select those items adds up to twenty thousand five hundred that's going to be the deposit that we will be making consisting of these three we're going to say okay i'm going to keep the date the same same type of transaction should be happening the cash checking account should be going up now by the twenty thousand five hundred undeposited funds going down by the twenty thousand five hundred but subcategorizing those in the detailed report so let's save and close and see if that is indeed what happens save and close back to the balance sheet over here looking at the checking account double clicking on the checking account and we see there there's the deposit there if we double click on it we see our deposit closing this back out we see it's split because it's split between those three items that are in there when we see the bank reconciliation we should see these two amounts in the bank reconciliation not them split out and that'll help us to reconcile closing this back out we're going to go down to the undeposited funds now and you can see that it's gone there is no undeposited funds where did it go well it's zero now therefore no longer on the report now if you want to see it there's a couple different ways you could do that and this is this is the case with any kind of uh, account that has a zero balance in it one is that you can go to the lists over here and go to the chart of accounts and that'll give you uh, the undeposited the undeposited funds here now if you double click on that account it'll give you the register so this is the activity uh, it's not an activity report but it's giving you kind of that activity by uh, a register format similar to the check register so this will help us to kind of tick and tie these items out and then if we close this back out you can also uh, generate a report with this if we if we uh, go down here so I'm on the undeposited funds and then I go down to this reports drop up item we can go to reports and it's a little off the screen now but you can see something it'll say uh, uh, report undeposited funds will, will be the first item and that'll give you the uh, account the transaction detail that would be typically similar to what we would see if we had the zero balance we could double click on another useful report that accountants use a lot that's not as used uh, with non-accountants is, is the trial balance so if I if I close this back out go to reports up top and we go to accounting and taxes you'll see the top report is a trial balance so accountants that like debits and credits will typically use this account and if I change the date range to 010119 to 123119 then uh, you're going to see this information and notice it, it includes the zero balance here so uh, the trial balance QuickBooks will often include a, a balance that has zero on the trial balance that had activity in it so even though it's zero it has activity for the time period we are looking at and therefore QuickBooks keeps that there so that we can basically auto zoom on it by double clicking on it and having a nice easy uh, way to get to the detail so that's another useful report to uh, to keep in mind for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.